going to hit northern Europe. There were some amazing red and yellow skies that appeared over the British Isles, a highly unusual phenomenon that meteorologists describe as occurring on occasion as a result of dust and sand particulates from the Sahara Desert. As it turns out, this event has garnered a great deal of controversy regarding the origin of these particulates. Whether the Saharan phenomenon has happened in previous years can be left for debate, but there may actually be some validity to the story of dust particles falling from the sky, as these images are showing. This satellite image from March of 2014 is showing sand particulates, seen in pink being carried by the winds over Western Europe, where they fell as fine particles onto waiting vehicles. So although the skies over the British Isles may have appeared apocalyptic on October 16th, there may actually be a plausible explanation for this anomaly. It can be argued that the winds of Hurricane Ophelia may have caused the red sky phenomenon. But there is something quite amazing uh, that makes the average viewer pause whenever an eerie event such as this occurs. On the same day that the sky turned a shade of red and yellow in London, this footage of two suns was recorded. One can argue that this is only an optical illusion, and yet the movement of the object in and out of the clouds makes this observation much more credible. Hurricane Ophelia, which hit Ireland, was responsible for some of the biggest waves ever recorded. This wave was the largest one ever recorded off the Irish coast, measuring 58.4 feet. Take a look at this footage from the Irish coast on October 16th, as Ophelia comes ashore. In the western Pacific, Typhoon Lan came ashore in Japan on October 23rd. This storm was so enormous that its cloud field engulfed the entire Japanese island. The hurricane unleashed 20 inches of rain in many areas, causing numerous landslides and forcing the evacuation of hundreds of thousands of residents across Japan. A complex and anomalous storm system hit southwestern Australia on October 22nd, bringing with it more than 50,000 electrical strikes and more than 20 millimeters of rain, its highest daily total for October in more than 12 years. As we consider the enormous amount of anomalous weather events that are happening in the world today, it is imperative that we reflect on why these events are happening and ultimately determine their origin. 
Some viewers are implying that the historic rain and flood events happening today are intentionally created through the use of man-made technology, such as HARP, or similar weather modification techniques. The implied suggestion uh, that technology is involved in our weather is something that for all intents and purposes cannot be ruled out as a theoretical cause of the strange weather anomalies being witnessed today. Many years ago, a man named Charlie Hatfield, who was a sewing machine salesman, became a figure of notoriety. He was considered by many people throughout the Americas as the greatest rainmaker of the modern era. For some 30 years, he practiced his techniques, and he won a name for himself by saving crops and ending droughts from the Yukon to Guatemala. The scene of his most spectacular accomplishment was in San Diego, California. In 1915, he approached the city council and offered to fill the reservoir at a marina dam for a fee of $10,000. Now, for the city council, it seemed like a humorous proposition since the reservoir had never been more than one-third full since it was built. But they agreed to his offer. On January 1st of 1916, Hatfield arrived at Marina Dam, some 60 miles east of San Diego, and he set out to accomplish his proposition. He began by erecting a wooden tower about 20 feet high. On top of that tower, he placed very large galvanizing trays containing a special moisturizing mixture. He then, through a process of chemical evaporation, which process he kept closely guarded, began his technique of producing rain. On January 5th, four days after arriving at the dam, there was already rain falling at the reservoir. By January 10th, heavy torrential rains were falling throughout the county. The downpour continued in earnest for an astonishing 10 days. As torrents of rain rushed through the streets of, of San Diego, transportation was suspended, telephone and telegraph lines were cut off, and rivers overflowed their banks, washing away homes and barns. The rains then subsided and folks began to clean up and repair the damage. But then, shortly thereafter, on January 26, the storms returned. At Marina Dam, the rain was torrential the entire day. By midnight, the reservoir was rising at a rate of two feet per day. The rain finally subsided when the reservoir level had reached an amazing five inches from the very top of the dam, thus averting a massive disaster. But other areas were not so fortunate. The lower OT dam disintegrated, releasing a wall of water 40 feet high, demolishing everything in its path. The result of this disaster was that 50 lice were lost, 200 bridges were destroyed, and miles of railway track were washed away. The surrounding mountains and hills were left scarred for years, and the landscape changed permanently in some locations. For his part, Hatfield believed that he had fulfilled his promise to end the drought and to fill the reservoir. But when he confronted the city council to collect his payment, they refused to pay him. Apparently, Hatfield had not completed a signed legal agreement between the two parties. Therefore, the council declared that the deluge was an act of God and could not honor his proposition unless he provided proof that he was responsible for the torrential rains, which, of course, he could not do. But even so, the city of San Diego has remembered Hatfield and what he has accomplished at the Marina Dam, when in 1948 the city hired a cloud seeder to make it rain in that particular year. Therefore, as history has shown, it is feasible to manipulate weather events through means of composed chemicals and through a technological process. It is a process which is worthy of consideration given the extent of the catastrophic weather events 
that are happening in our times. Today's climate is in a state of turmoil. It is becoming more chaotic and more complicated. In 1915, Southern California was desperately seeking relief from the drought. Today, they are seeking relief from the torrid Santa Ana winds that are bringing record-breaking heat to San Diego and surrounding communities, prompting red flag fire warnings as shown in this graph from the National Weather Service. Triple-digit temperatures are being recorded in many cities across Southern California. Dozens of schools that are not sufficiently air-conditioned have either closed their doors or cut back their daily schedule. On the morning of October 24th, a very strange weather phenomena occurred over the Great Lakes. A rapidly intensifying area of low pressure engulfed this region, producing powerful winds and huge waves. The sudden intensification of this type of storm is referred to as bombogenesis, which creates what is known as a bomb storm, as shown in this animation on October 23rd and 24th. In this incredible video from Lake Superior, the waves were so powerful that people actually felt it in the rocks that they stood on. The world is quickly changing, as are the migratory habits of marine and animal life across the globe. A never-before-observed phenomena in Alaska's waters was reported by the Fisheries Science Center. Strange creatures that normally live in tropical waters are invading Alaska in high densities. These jelly-like creatures are called pyrosomes, which live in tropical waters around the world. They were first observed in southeastern Alaska in February of this year. It has not been determined whether this is a rare phenomena or a dramatic change in the migratory habits of these creatures. Many species of marine and animal life are finding ways to adapt and to survive, which is quite the opposite of humanity, which is always inventing ways to endanger their very survival. Here in the United States, there are multiple risks by way of nuclear power facilities. These facilities are run by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which is responsible for the safety of the nuclear plants and the material components that keep these facilities running. Recent reports are indicating that there are roughly 90 cooling pools that are filled with spent fuel rods. So what this means in layman's terms, is that several hundred tons of spent nuclear fuel 
are in these 90 cooling pools. Because these pools are located in a less restricted area of the reactor, the stored radioactive material is more vulnerable to natural disasters or from unsuspected attacks from uh, terror groups. After the Fukushima nuclear disaster in 2011, the NRC was supposed to have an action plan in place in case of a similar meltdown. But instead, they ignored the warnings and failed to follow through on their contingency plans, thus leaving millions of Americans at risk of a radiological catastrophe. According to a report, the rods could have been moved at a cost of about $50 million, but the NRC indicated that it wasn't worth the cost. That such a catastrophe was highly unlikely, and if it were to happen, the radioactive contaminants would not travel more than 50 miles, and they would only take a year to clean up. Now, if the NRC had been monitoring the situation in Fukushima, then they should understand that their rhetoric on this subject makes very little sense. Contrary to the statements of the NRC, Princeton researchers did their own analysis on the fallout from radioactive fires. They used in their hypothesis the Peach Bottom Nuclear Power Plant in Pennsylvania. According to their research, they projected that four major cities would be contaminated, those cities being New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington. Millions of people would be displaced from these four major cities at a price tag of $2 trillion. So there seems to be a dilemma in whether we should accept the government's viewpoint regarding the safety risks from the nuclear reactors, or whether we accept the findings of the scientists who, for the most part, are seeking the truth. In this case, sadly enough, if there is no public discourse about this dangerous situation, then it will be business as usual with the NRC and the nuclear industry, regardless of the ongoing environmental catastrophe that is emanating from the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Because of the lack of response from the public, the U.S. is planning to build four more nuclear units by the year 2021. If you were to look at the map here of the nuclear facilities in the United States and then cross-reference them with locations where fault lines are present, then you can see just how vulnerable we are to a potential disaster in the event of a major earthquake, an event that could happen at any time. When you analyze the map, it can be determined that there are 23 uh, U.S. plants presently using a Mark I boiling water reactor, the same technology which was involved in the Fukushima nuclear disaster in Japan. All are in the eastern half of the country. There are eight nuclear power plants located along the seismically active west coast. In addition, 12 of the American reactors that are of the same vintage as the Fukushima plant are in seismically active areas. So, although earthquake activity may not result in a major meltdown of the reactor, it certainly would present significant engineering challenges. As with every risk, you must consider all of the pros and cons. And when it comes to a nuclear reactor, there seems to be more risks than there are benefits. We are living in perilous times. In today's world, we must confront dangers at every turn. Some of the risks that confront us are of our own doing, whereby we show no regard for the welfare of the planet or its inhabitants. We also face dangers from natural forces that are not of our creation and that we cannot control. It is a two-edged sword with a destructive ability that must be carefully handled if we are to survive in a changing world. As we bear witness to the great transformation that has begun, Look to the sky for guidance and spiritual peace of mind, for therein lies 
the sign of these times.